Hello everyone. I'm excited to present our work on a new sparse transformation framework. But first, I'll argue why. Problems in many domains, such as data analytics, machine learning, or science and engineering, are messy and irregular. These problems require representations that reflect this irregularity. For example, consider a data set of Amazon reviews. Given that every customer does not review every product with all words, this tensor is extremely sparse. In this case, the sparse representation is far more space efficient, and there are many similar situations where computing over sparse inputs is important. Even with a small sample of important sparse sensor algebra kernels, it becomes clear that while it is possible to write any of these kernels, you can't write them all. This is especially true when considering the combinatorial explosion of common sparse sensor storage formats and the machines that these codes may execute on. For dense tensor algebra, there remains an opportunity to decompose kernels into a set of primitives. This decomposition leads to asymptotically worse performance for sparse tensor algebra. For example, consider the sampled dense dense matrix multiplication kernel. Decomposing this kernel into a dense matrix multiplication in a sparse element-wise product is inefficient due to having to compute all elements of the matrix multiplication. In comparison, the fuse kernel can be far more efficient, as it only needs to compute partial results for elements where b is non-zero. In this case, the fuse kernel is up to n squared more efficient than the unfused kernel. Now that we have motivated the need for automatically generating these fuse kernels, consider the output of an existing sparse sensor algebra compiler, TACO, for the simple problem of sparse matrix times vector, or SPMB. This kernel iterates over the rows of the matrix and then the non-zero elements within each row. While this kernel is correct, we argue that the sparse transformations introduced in this work are necessary for automatically generating codes using performance-sensitive applications. We show that sparse transformations are needed to generate codes that are optimized for the hardware, which means that they effectively load balance the computation over parallel elements and vector units. They also allow for eff efficiently utilizing the memory hierarchy. This is especially important for generating codes for highly parallel accelerators. The automatically generated kernel produced by this work is able to achieve 6.9 times better performance than paralyzing the outer loop of the taco generated code over GPU threads. In addition, these transformations allow for exploring an optimization space dependent on characteristics of the inputs. The input size and the sparsity structure can greatly impact the profitability of different optimizations in difficult to predict ways. For example, we can consider two different GPU SPMB kernels produced by this work. One parallelizes the rows of the input matrix across GPU warps, and the other equally distributes the non-zeros of the matrix over GPU threads. Due to the trade-offs between load imbalance and synchronization overhead, these kernels perform very differently on matrices with different distributions of non-zeros per row, but the same number of total non-zeros. We can see that choosing the wrong optimization strategy for a given input can lead to cases where performance is degraded 3.7 times or improved by more than 4.8 times. This demonstrates that high-performance code is not a one-size-fits-all and must be tuned for the particular context that the code will be run in. The irregularity of sparse data structures imposes constraints on sparse transformations that make them more challenging than similar dense transformations. Consider a small sparse matrix. This matrix can be stored in a dense random access structure. Dense structures like this allow for easily transforming loops and updating the corresponding affine indexing functions. On the other hand, sparse structures stored in a format such as the common compressed sparse rows, or CSR format, do not allow random access and embed rows and columns from the untransformed iteration space directly within the metadata of the data structure. In this format, the column values for all non-zero elements are stored as well as pointers into the array for each row. This allows for fast iteration of the non-zero elements, but requires binary searching for random access. Additionally, the complexities of sparse structures lead to much more complex code. Consider the simple example of adding two vectors. When these vectors are dense, the code is very simple. 
and transforming this code for parallelization is straightforward. When the vectors are sparse, however, the code is much more complex and includes multiple while loops. Transforming this code for parallelization is non-trivial due to the lack of random access. The transform code contains multiple binary searches and additional loop conditionals. This work takes inspiration from Halide, which first separated the algorithmic language, which describes what to compute, and the scheduling language, which describes how to compute. This separation allows for efficiently exploring the optimization space while maintaining the correctness of the algorithm. On the other hand, Taco separated the algorith algorithmic language from a data representation language, which describes the sparse formats of the inputs. This allows for the user to easily try new representations for their data without modifying the algorithm. This work demonstrates the importance of separating all three languages for the application of tensor algebra. We embed our sparse transformation framework within the open source TACO project. This allows for the user to specify optimizations manually through a scheduling language. An auto scheduler described in the paper also allows for automatically obtaining good default schedules. These sparse transformations in combination with the new CUDA backend allows for us to generate sparse sensor algebra code competitive with hand-optimized implementations on both CPUs and GPUs. Within this final diagram, the highlighted sections depict new contributions of this work. I will now quickly demonstrate the power of the separation of algorithm, data representation, and scheduling language with a small set of examples. For this example, we'll focus on matrix vector multiplication. We can first specify that both inputs should be dense. Providing an empty scheduling language yields the following simple code. This code iterates over all rows and columns of the matrix and multiplies by the dense vector. We can try different format combinations now, such as compressed sparse columns. This format is like CSR, but stores columns before rows. Or we can try compressed sparse rows in a sparse vector. This code requires performing a two-finger merge between the columns of the matrix and the non-zeros of the vector. We can also try CSR with the dense vector. The dense vector allows for random access, which makes the merge code unnecessary. We can now start transforming this code with the scheduling language to generate an optimized GPU kernel for this problem. We start with collapsing the loops to iterate directly over the non-zeros of the sparse matrix. Instead of iterating over the non-zeros within each row, this code now iterates over all of the non-zeros and tracks changes to the row value within the inner loop. We can now strip mine the sparse loop such that each iteration has the same number of non-zeros of the A matrix. We start with blocks and can continue to strip mine for warps and threads. Note that NNZ per thread and block size are compile time constants. Notice how creating this hierarchical parallelism is done generally, and these transformations could easily be applied to other parallel hardware. In this optimization strategy, each thread is given seven consecutive non-zeros to multiply with the corresponding element of the dense vector. We can also optimize for GPU memory bandwidth with the pre-compute transformation. This results in reading all of the inputs and pre-computing the multiplication. In a separate loop, we can accumulate the temporary array into the output. We can un also unroll the pre-computation loop. This transformation exposes additional instruction level parallelism. The pre-compute and unroll optimizations together provide a 36% speed up for the GPU schedule. Finally, we can parallelize this code into an optimized GPU kernel. There's a lot of code now, so you can't see the details, but trust me, it's much more fun to write the schedule on the right than to try to write the code on the left without any bugs. Especially for problems with higher dimensional tensors, it can be near impossible to write one of these kernels correctly, let alone trying multiple co codes to see which strategy is faster. This automatically generated kernel achieves state-of-the-art performance on a modern NVIDIA GPU over the entire sweet sparse, sparse matrix dataset. Numbers in red show geometric mean speedups over hand-optimized implementations. Due to our load balancing, we achieve speedups compared to QSparse on our regular matrices. The merge-based SPMV algorithm 
also load balances reads of the row pointers to achieve perfect load balancing, but suffers from additional overhead. Over the entire data set, we match their performance. A different set of transformations yields optimized CPU performance, which achieves significant speedups over the hand-optimized Intel MKL and Eigen libraries. Our transformations also generalize to other kernels. For example, consider the problem of matricized tensor times Cauchy row product, or MTTKRP, which is a bottleneck for many data analytics applications. Despite comparing the implementations that use specialized formats designed to perform well on GPU, our transformations allow us to generate a kernel that achieves comparable performance while using the standard compressed sparse fibers format. We also obtain a 1.3 times speedup over the coordinate COO format that does not require preprocessing. Finally, a different set of transformations allows us to achieve large speedups on CPU. We achieve 3.34x the performance of TACO without our sparse transformations and 1.49x the highly optimized splat library. In the paper, we demonstrate that we are able to achieve comparable performance to hand optimized implementations for many problems on both CPU and GPU. This table depicts the speedup of our generated kernels over the fastest hand optimized implementation that we compare against. For SPMM GPU, there exists further opportunities to better utilize the GPU shared memory scratch pad. For SDDMM GPU, there remains room to optimize for small problems that take less than 0.1 milliseconds. Even within this set of problems, we were unable to find optimized implementations for all expressions. The true power of this work is that it generalizes to many sparse tensor algebra problems that remain unoptimized. This includes complex codes with multiple higher dimensional tensors and unions and intersections over multiple sparse operands. Additionally, as all of the transformations are done generally, it is straightforward to add additional backends for new hardware. And finally, the auto scheduler described in the paper allows for automatically achieving a strong baseline performance, even for users with no performance engineering knowledge. Additional combinations of expressions, formats, and schedules can easily be generated using the interactive web demo. We also comprehensively tested the implementation and contributed it back to the TACO open source repository. This allows the work to also be used within the TACO C++ library version or the command line tool. Now that we have established the usefulness of this work, I'd like to take the rest of the presentation to build intuition for our transformations. Further details and formalism are provided in the paper. Let's start with considering the split transformation that divides an iteration space into subsegments. For dense iteration spaces, we really only care about even splits over the dimensions of the space. Notice, however, that this isn't always ideal for sparse iteration spaces, as it can lead to unbalanced partitions. For sparse iteration spaces, we might also think about evenly splitting up the non-zero rows of a matrix, or directly splitting on the non-zero elements of a matrix. There are different trade-offs for each of these, especially when considering multiple sparse inputs or higher dimensional spaces. The key insight that this work uses to allow for expressing all of these types of transformations is that, as well as mapping from coordinates to non-zeros, sparse tensors also map from non-zeros to coordinates. This allows us to use these mappings to determine how partitioning based on one input's non-zeros affects the iteration of the other inputs. In addition, we avoid directly transforming compl complex co-iteration loops and instead transform sparse iteration spaces in terms of the lexical graphical ordering that points should be iterated in. In this case, we depict a row-first iteration of the space where i refers to the row index and j refers to the column index. Focusing on the lexical graphical ordering allows us to largely ignore sparsity and instead handle generating the sparse iteration loops after all of the transformations have been applied. Our split transformation is used to split one level of lexicographical order into two, where the size of each level can either be based on a fixed number of non-zeros or coordinates. Similarly, the collapse transformation causes for two nested nodes in the lexicographical order to be merged. Normally, a sparse data structure is iterated in the order that modes are stored in the format. After applying a collapse transformation, the tensor is instead iterated at the bottom level and the index for the top level of the data structure, in this case the row index, needs to be tracked within the loop body. 
These transformations compose with the other transformations introduced in the paper to allow for expressing complex optimization strategies. I leave the details of code generation to the paper, but I wanted to provide the intuition for how code is generated for these transformations, despite the inability to rewrite indexing expressions as discussed earlier. We decompose the problem of generating code for transformed sparse iteration spaces into three set problems. Recovery is used to map the coordinates in the transformed iteration space back into the original iteration space. Bound propagation determines the bounds of the transformed iteration space based on the bounds placed on the original iteration space. And finally, iteration guards are used to protect against iterating out of bounds when tile sizes do not evenly divide the original space. The sections of the code that are highlighted correspond to the subproblem with the same color. To generate each of these components, we maintain the relationship between transformed iteration variables in a structure called a provenance graph. We can then generate code by traversing this graph. For example, during recovery, we apply a function defined per transformation that propagates known values on the right of the graph through adjacent functions to determine an unknown value on the left of the graph. These functions are provided in the paper. In conclusion, this work allows for transforming sparse iteration spaces, which unlocks the ability to automatically generate high-performance CPU and GPU code. We further show that these transformations are general and provide opportunities to optimize for new expressions and hardware in unexplored ways. Please see the paper for more details or the website to try more expressions yourself. Thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to answering your questions during Q&A or by email. Thank you.